Hi everyone, this video is a three and a half minute primer on the initial drainage of paronychias and felons. This is a patient who presented with four days of left index finger swelling. She said it started around the fold of the nail but now seemed to be extending to the pulp of the digit. So I wasn't sure if I was dealing with a paronychia or a felon. Given a paronychia is much simpler to drain, we began by exploring the possibility of a paronychia. This involves taking a number 11 blade scalpel, running it just parallel to the nail, essentially right over the nail, and making the initial incision at the site of maximal swelling. Now, if no pus or drainage comes out, as it was the case here, you'll then extend the excision along the epinicule fold to make sure you haven't missed a small pocket of pus. If that also fails, you can take a pair of suture scissors and bluntly dissect along the same tissue plane to see if there are any small pockets of pus that are trapped. In this case, despite that dissection, there weren't really any pockets of pus or infection to find. At this point, I decided it was time to look and see if this could possibly be a felon that needed incision and drainage. There are a lot of different ways to perform incision and drainage of a felon. The preferred method is to make an incision along the area of the greatest fluctuance, and when possible, that will be a longitudinal midline incision. Sometimes it will have to be a lateral incision depending on where the fluctuance is. You want to make sure not to extend that incision beyond that distal interphalangeal crease, which can injure the flexor tendon. I began to squeeze the fingertip and was able to express a small pus coming out of the pulp of the finger, diagnostic of the presence of a felon. The next step was to bluntly dissect along the tissue planes because remember there are many fibrous septae that exist in the fingertip pulp. If you don't dissect through all those septae, the infection won't completely drain. This is an appropriate moment to obtain a wound culture if you feel it's necessary. You can also place a wick of iodoform or plain paper packing in order to stent open the wound. What you'll next want to do is to construct a bulky dressing to handle any further drainage or bleeding from the wound. You will typically want to splint the fingertip and you'll encourage the patient when they go home to keep that finger elevated. They can remove the dressing in 24 hours. They can begin warm soaks at home in order to facilitate further drainage from the wound. And you're going to want to schedule a recheck in about two to three days for the wound to be looked at again. At that time, the wound may require further irrigation. It'll be a good moment to follow up on the wound cultures to determine if the patient needs any further treatment with antibiotics uh, and to generally assess if the felon is completely draining. There are other more complicated incisions that can sometimes be used for incision and drainage of a felon. These include techniques like the hockey stick drainage method or even the fish mouth incision. These are not initially preferred incisions as they have higher morbidity, higher healing times, and can sometimes lead to instability of the finger, not to mention higher risk of damage to the digital nerves and arteries. You can learn more about these techniques at the accompanying blog post and learn more about this technique and other techniques in emergency wound care at www dot lacerationrepair.com